Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Uh, the you know another summer of eighty nine. We yeah. already did, we did Star Trek five. Mm-hmm. And here's yeah the companion, the companion piece. piece. Yeah, I, I mean thinking back, it's like oh yeah that was I was a pr- I was pretty active uh, you know going to the movies back then. You know saw this with saw you know Star Trek with my dad. Saw this with my dad. What, this, what a this, summer! This is like a father son kind of movie. And you think about it, it's like now it's like a given that you know parents take their kids to see movies and they're all into it. You know you go see the Marvel thing and like. Mom and dad and the kids are all, like, equally into it. But that wasn't a given back then. But, like, movies like this, like Star Trek, it's like, okay, like, my parents, it was a show when they were younger, and then, uh, you know, and then now it's, you know, kind of, you know, a, a new thing. And then Indiana Jones was kind of, and, and also, like, you know, like, grown-ups were, like, way into Indiana Jones back then. But then the added thing of having, you know, James Bond, Bond. in it, you know, kind of, you know. The, I bet uh, Spielberg was so excited. He's like, he he's like, uh... I can't if I can't make James Bond, we can have Indy be literally the son of James Bond. And also, it's like what sweet revenge! It's like they're they're denied uh, access to James Bond. No, you can't make a James Bond movie. So then they make Indiana Jones, which is like better than James yeah. Bond. And then it's like, oh, you're doing Timothy Dalton James Bond movies. <laughs> I'm doing a James. I'm doing a James Bond movie with Sean, Sean Connery. Connery. And I'm I'm doing a movie with the real guy. You know. <laughs> Yeah, this is right. You're right. It's right up against the Dawn Bond. Like that. That was. I think that was the one where the uh, big rig was traveling on like two wheels. <laughs> All of those, um, like every James Bond looks better in retrospect because it's like um, George Lazenby. It was like, oh, P. U. This guy sucks. But like you watch it now, and it's like, holy it's, shit, it's, it's awesome. And then Roger Moore. It's like. You're no Sean Connery, but then it's like you watch it now. It's like these are pretty cool. Yeah. And same with like Timothy Dalton. Yeah. It's like that guy was doing nothing wrong. Like those that, that was pretty. That was a pretty cool movie. Uh, the first one. I, I, maybe the second one less so, but it's still like this. This is as good as any Bond. And then like um, Pierce Brosnan was like the first James Bond since Sean Connery to finally get a fair shake. They were finally like they. It, it was kind of like Saturday Night Live when you had that like. Ho- that that first season without Morton Michaels and where they replaced the whole cast. Yeah. And it was like, that one got shit on so bad. And then pretty soon, it's like, oh yeah, Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live is this thing where they replace the cast every every so often. You know, okay, no big deal. But, uh, and it's, it's, like, it's like, a bunch of guys had to get shit on before people were like, oh yeah, James Bond, it's a different guy, you know. They're gonna reset yeah. every so often. And so then, Pierce Brosnan, it seemed like he, he sort of slid right in there and like, that nobody that, was you know, giving him a hard shit. time yeah and then daniel craig just finished so we're excited to see what the next yeah, uh, what the version. next phase is yeah and daniel craig when daniel craig showed up it was like uh you know the messiah or something <laughs> you know it was like this guy's a mate this guy's more sean connery than sean connery you know they're like he is risen <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, but yeah. Um, I can't wait till we actually do, we, 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 I gotta figure out our first Bond. Yeah, I mean, our first Bond would have to be the George, the George Lazenby, Lazenby one. one. That's, that's on brand. Did we do a George Lazenby Bond? I think we did something. We were talking oh, you know about him, and what I think were we maybe, talking about him? I don't know if we, see, sometimes I don't know if we did the episode or just <laughs> talked about doing the episode, but there was the George Lazenby uh, life story movie, remember? There was like a movie we where, where he's do like, that. You okay, were talking we, about yeah. we should do, yeah. I'm gonna wear my fringed, uh, <laughs> uh, dyed leather jacket. Mm-hmm. He's like, uh, he shows up with his giant beard on a motorcycle. Well, the George Lazenby thing. So it's like, you know, he plays James Bond. He was real good in it, and I think, and, and like the rumor was, oh, there was only one with him because he was so bad. He was so yeah. he was a he was shit. It was rotten and stuff. But it's like, no, he just they didn't. Wanted, want, yeah, they wanted him to come back. He didn't want to, um, you know, and and. But like yeah, he, the famous thing he shows up and he's got the beard. Full beard. It's like he's why, not an Easy Rider. <laughs> yeah, like why couldn't that have become James Bond? Like that would it's have like, been amazing. Yeah, James Bond is all clean cut. Like it starts out in like the early sixties. Now it's like the sixties, sixties going into the seventies. Like why why can't James Bond all of a sudden be uh, the hippie uh, secret agent? You know, Tom, that we just. Cre- created the uh, a cold opening for uh, our James Bond because in the beginning of Rambo three, yeah. Troutman goes. It's they're always going to get Rambo, and he's work. He's like built working in this like, um, uh, in, a, in like this monastery. 
<laughs> and he's like, I found peace, Travis. Like, what if they go to, to pull James Bond back? And he's like, yeah. he's got his hog. He's right, like, sure. He's like, he's just like, uh, you know, hanging out at a fucking, like, at a roadhouse or whatever. Well, that's kind of where these James Bonds kind of end up, too. Because, like, the Daniel Craig ones, he kind of get, you know, he gets to a point where you're like, he doesn't want to be James Bond, like, like where James Bond, like, like not Daniel Craig in real life, uh, but like James Bond, the character is kind of like, I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to live a normal life. So like, they do kind of get there, sort of story wise. So like, why not, why not have show that visually with him being like all, you know, the the David Letterman beard. And, yeah, you know. I like all the yeah the talk show hosts. Whenever they, they retire, immediately grow that big. Well, because they have to maintain a kind of james bond image they kind of have to be sort of like Slick. clean cut where yeah we're wearing a suit and yeah just let it hang out after yeah, you're yeah, done yeah now yeah the uh we, we um we saw a lot of cycle play like this we were we were saying and when we did our lawrence of arabia oh episode. so so yeah this is the uh, indiana jones and the last crusade episode i forgot we started <laughs> oh no, no, my no. brain was going into uh, <laughs> uh james, into james bond, bond land yeah but yeah like the we, motorcycle play a lot yeah. of play in there yeah, I mean, it, it is, those Those are the Lawrence of Arabia yeah, motorcycles, motorcycles, and it's, uh, yeah. I also see Lawrence of Arabia shit stain on <laughs> where hang, uh, hanging in the well, tree. Well, this is kind of like the road he was on, it was just kind of this tree-lined road. Now, this guy who's doing all the stunts and doing the wheelies, like, what did he think was going to happen? He's doing that big wheelie, <laughs> it's like, oh, maybe I'll just put a stick in your, in your wheel. And it's kind of cool, because it's a joust. You know, it like, is. This is... This is like a new kind of like Ivanhoe or like Knights of Arthur kind of. It's like you know the closest thing we're gonna get to a Knights of Arthur kind of movie, and so we have a joust in it. It's just on motorcycles. Tom, there's a George Romero movie called Night Riders. We've got mm -hmm. it covered on mm -hmm. here. It's about like these Ren Fair motorcyclists that joust. I like that. It's yeah. fucking that great. Awesome. It's like it's like a hangout movie, bro. It sounds like uh, Spielberg saw that movie. When uh, yeah, that made this. me think of that. Like, it, it has Ed Harris in it, mm -hmm. Stephen King cameo. But we'll put it on the list. Well, we'll yeah, we'll put it on, like, yeah, add it. They're on the road. They see. They're like, who's this that, fucking guy? George Lazenby. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, got a, a, they call him a pay or handlebars. They're the ones that are on the line. Yeah, that's Easy Rider. That's what, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Like, um, what, he's like, good day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> they have to go to the Outback. <laughs> I called we should go for more on the George Lazenby be uh, Easy Rider like episode. We just flip it down because, yeah, he's like, there he is. There's that no good hippie Lazenby. <laughs> he's like, uh, Jack Nicholson's like on the on well, the back of his. Room. I was just watching One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and you kind of oh, have nice. like. It's like the first movie for a bunch of guys. So you have like Danny DeVito in there. Oh, wow. And you have uh, Christopher Lloyd. Oh, shit. And then you have a... uh, the guy who played Chucky. Is in oh, the... Brad Dereef? And he's like the young guy. He's he's like the young kid. He's the one that, um, uh, he, he's the one that Jack Nicholson is like, what are you doing in here? You should be in a convertible bird dog and chicks and banging beaver. <laughs> it's like, for some reason, that's my alert on my phone when I get a text. I'm like, that's like my like, alert on my phone. I'm like, I mean, I'm at like some like... Uh... But, but like, so watching that movie and seeing... Um, Jack Nicholson in like a hospital with um, Danny DeVito. It, it was kind of like, ooh, like I was kind of imagining it like an Arkham Asylum movie, oh, where like shit. you know Jack Nicholson as the Joker mm -hmm. in there with uh, uh, Danny DeVito as the Penguin and stuff. Oh my you know, god! And, 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 and Doc Brown. <laughs> yeah, it's the same place Doc Brown gets institutionalized in in the uh, in Back, that, to the, like, future. back to the Future uh, the parallel line. universe. Yeah, the um, yeah, he's like. I, George, George Lazenby was like, "Don't bogart that joint." <laughs> right. So, uh, wait, what, 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 I well, can't so, remember what, so, what, what yeah. our episode is. Well, so, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't remember. What so, are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, we're talking. We're talking about Last Crusade, the Indiana Jones and Last Crusade. But so, like, has there ever? And, and then there was there was like a movie. It was like this romantic comedy with uh, Michael Keaton and Christopher Reeve in it. So it's like oh. so it, it was like about it was I think it was about like sort of political. It was like okay. a political kind of thing. Uh, Gina Davis was in wow. it too, I think. But like when I saw that movie, I was kind of imagining like a you know world's finest movie where it's like <laughs> Superman 
And, uh, you know, somebody could probably go in, you know, uh, digitally and, like, kind of turn that movie into, you know, a, a Batman meets Superman. But it's like, was there a movie where, you know, Sean Connery and George Lazenby and uh, uh, Sir Roger Moore, Moore are all kind of, like, hanging out together, just you know, yeah. some other kind of thing? Yeah, know? he's like... Uh... I'm from Scotland. He's like, I'm from Wales. And he's like, I'm from the Outback. <laughs> he's like, good day, mate. <laughs> James Wan throws a boomerang. He's, he's got so like, Vegemite watch, all over his face. Watching that, um, that George Lazenby, doc, it's not a documentary. It's like this, it's like George Lazenby is like telling his story to the camera. Uh, and then there's, and then you like cut to like an actor playing young George Lazenby. And it like he is so like the stereotype of Australia because he's like larger than life. You're like I might, and he's kind of like <laughs> like blundering well, into yeah. these situations just with like pure machismo bluster. and bluster and whatever. And and then it makes kind of, it, it makes so much sense that he just kind of blusters his way into becoming the next James Bond, this thing that like everybody wants. And it's like where the hell did this guy even come from? And then but then it also makes sense that he'd be like, ah, hey, honor me, James Bond, you know, and stick it up your arse. <laughs> yeah. He's like, now if you excuse, he's like, pardon me, let me take this. He's like, I'm, it's it's Paul Hogan. And he's, like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, I have to take this. And and it's like, why wouldn't he? Like, why? Like, his whole life had been sort of going this way. Why wouldn't he assume that, like, eh, something better will come yeah, along? Yeah. Like, why, you know, why wouldn't he, you know, and, and then it, and then he sort of realizes, like, oh, wait, you know, I went a step too far. Like, I there, had this good thing going with James Bond. There's an interview where, where he's like, uh, telling how he, he's like, yeah, Steve Irwin asked me to go diving with him. I turned him down. Or it's like a story where he... <laughs> is, is somebody going to make a movie with, like, Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill just kind of hanging out? You know what I mean? Like, Jesus. like how come there's not that? Like, there's, there, you know, like, just, just doing something else all together. together. Yeah. Yeah, get those on, guys yeah, on screen on. together. Yeah. Like, uh... Where they're not in, in well, yeah, where Star it's not Wars Star Wars. Yeah, so it you know it's like they should do an airplane movie where they're like it's like a like a Great that, Waldo well, Pepper. That's how they would have to convince <laughs> that's uh, what, Harrison Ford to get on board. That's like, what it's about amateur aviation, aviation. and he's and, like and, uh, <laughs> and, and single ears. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> He's like, now you're speaking, now you're speaking my language. Uh, continue. continue. That's why that made me think of it because I was like, the one thing they could get him off his ass is like the experimental aircraft. Because uh, you know, uh, Mark Hamill is in. is like bummed that they, he didn't get any scenes with Harrison Ford in the new Star Wars movies, and it's like the budgets for these Star Wars movies. Why couldn't they have like filmed a little mini movie? Of just something else altogether. Like, if you see, like, The Hobbit... Oh, or not The Hobbit, the, the Lord of the Rings movies. There's, like, an accompanying sort of documentary that, like, the guys... Like, the actors made. The actors made this little documentary. Oh, I about the, yeah. I, 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 so, like, how come... Is, is there something like that for Star Wars? Where it's, like, Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, and Harrison Ford, like... Uh, you know, you know, in a car together or something. Well, it, um, you know how, like, on Lord of the Rings, all the guys got, like, tattoos? Yeah. All, like, mm -hmm. well, Harrison Ford on the set of Lord of the Rings <laughs> tried to convince everybody to get single, single <laughs> dangling earrings. Yeah, and they were, like, the little orphan Annie Lockett. So, like, the three of them all, like, fit together <laughs> to form a shape. They all, like, put their heads next to each other. It's like, on the Lord of the Rings, they're, like... Um, they're like, yeah, we got these tasteful little like uh, ta like tattoos, mm -hmm. and he's like, yeah, Harrison Ford wanted everybody to get a Prince Albert. <laughs> he tried to get one. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, they're dick <laughs> You it's know like, what would be kind of? I don't cool. like this idea, Harrison. So like, the ears not the only thing that's pierced. Last Crusade. We've got Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, and then his dad is James Bond. It's Sean Connery as as Henry Jones Sr. Like, how about the next James Bond movie? Like, you know, the new James Bond goes in to meet M, and it's Harrison Ford. <laughs> that's know? fucking. Gr that's a great idea, Tom. Yeah. That's hell yeah. That's mm -hmm. a great idea. The the um, it's it's <laughs> it's funny because like 
Uh, do you remember that movie Hollywood Homicide with Josh Hartnett? Mm -hmm. Apparently they hated each other's guts, so with the new James Bond, <laughs> it's, it's Josh Hartnett. Like, it's Josh Hartnett. <laughs> and they're like, they weren't like speaking off camera yeah. on the set. They like hated each other's guts. He's like, I think he called him a punk or something. Uh -huh. Yeah, Harrison Ford seems like somebody who would be like real easy to get on his bad side. <laughs> I show up to try to like compete. I like how we, we both came with the, like, we were both vibing on the way to his heart is amateur <laughs> and single earrings. Well, like, and Harrison Ford, it's so funny because, like, it, it, it's like all these guys who are, like, these icons and then, you, like, you want them to be that icon in real life and then, like, they're so not. So, like, the famous one is, like, you want um, Henry Winkler to be the Fonz in real life and then it was kind of, like, you know, like, oh, did you know the Fonz is actually a nerd? You know, he's actually, like, he talks like this. And, you know, and, and with Harrison Ford, it's like he's the coolest guy. He's so awesome. You want him to be your best friend. And it's like, he's the biggest grouch. He's the biggest, like, get off my lawn, kind of, you know, get off my airplane, get off my lawn. And, it, and, and like, like, he really should be playing uh, Mr. Wilson in, like, the new Dennis the Menace movie or something. Once again, yeah. Tom, you, you're nailing these Harrison, these late-stage Harrison Ford castings. Mm -hmm. you, you know, he's, like, yeah, he lives out in, like, Wyoming or something, or, like, mm -hmm. he has, like, a ranch. And he was in the, um, uh, that, like, was it, like, what, it Jack London movie from the last like five yeah years. right yeah a white white fang, fang. Yeah. and I think he acted completely he, they wouldn't they didn't have a real dog it was a CGI <laughs> dog he, like he's like I don't want this mangy mud it was it was like uh, you know a guy in just it was it's Andy, Andy Serkis. Serkis in like a green. <laughs> Uh, leotard but then like somebody as a prank did like a cgi chewbacca on all fours <laughs> crawling around <laughs> i'm just laughing because andy circus has a red rocket dick <laughs> like, red his dog dick is coming out they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> now what? He's like, no, I want dog shit. Yes. He's like, he's going method. And he's like crapping around the, around the campfire. It's like, they're like, now he's humping Harrison Ford's leg. They've got all kinds of like different, you know, prop replicas that you can buy and stuff. I'll have to look it up, but there's got to be the Grail Diary. You know, if you would could, love that. You know, like a replica of the Grail Diary. That would be pretty cool. I was on Hasbro Pulse recently, mm -hmm. and uh, they have a replica they're selling. Uh, I'll have to send you the link. It's for the um, that like uh, headstone for the the um, from the from Raiders that yeah. he puts on the staff. Okay, it lights yeah. up. Mm -hmm. I would love a Grail Diary yeah. prop. I thought you meant like you were gonna say the little gold <laughs> statue. Oh my From gosh, the that would the gold statue has a golden <laughs> ear. <laughs> yeah, well, Andy Circus was going off his rocker during White. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> he plays the dog. The the um, Last Crusade just has so many great jokes and like, um, you know, Sean Connery shooting the tail out of the, out of his own plane and so. And I love these like, I mean. Again, the you know we were talking about Star Star Trek Five. It's right before, um, sp it's like CGI. Uh, CGI takes over everything, and so it's kind of cool seeing these like model airplanes and stuff. Love with it. Maybe like a little puppet guy inside, you know, flying in. Yeah, I love whenever the the uh, bad guy's plane follows them into the. T I'm like, what? I'm always thinking like, I'm like, why would you follow them in the tunnel? But it makes a great action mm -hmm. sequence. Fun. Thank God. Gosh. Yeah, biplane action. And, you know, you think about, like, you know, it's it's George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, and you think about, it's like, let's get some biplanes in there, you know? Hell like, yeah. like, you know, George Lucas was like, yeah, biplanes. biplanes. Like, let's do the whole history of film. We'll have, like, you know, Buster Keaton stuff, you know? Like, flying through a barn, like, mm -hmm. barnstorming. Yeah. Harrison Ford's, like, was bummed that he didn't get to, to fly the real plane. Uh -huh. He's like, I get to keep the plane <laughs> when it's over. There was a um, Harrison Ford in, um... Westmoreland County <laughs> story for you. It was like 20 years ago. He he came to buy an airplane. He came to like okay. Arnold Palmer Airport. Right, yeah, because Arnold Palmer Airport, it's pretty cool. It's like a lot of small airplanes small. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. And he and there was this restaurant in town. They're like, he Harrison Ford ate there. And did they name a sandwich after him? They, like whatever he ordered became the, the Harrison Ford. Yeah, somebody's like, uh, 
All you that know, we left on the plate was our earring. <laughs> in this scene, the plane flies by. And then um, uh, we get sort of the north by northwest plane sequence of like a plane, you know, shooting down at people, which we talked about um, the sort of strafing, strafing. In, in our Lawrence of Arabia episode. And then, uh, and, and then it's also a James Bond thing. Like, James Bond cribbed that yeah. in, like, I think From Russia with Love. Took oh, that yeah. whole, like, uh, Hitchcock thing. Um, except instead of, you know, it's like um, Cary Grant getting chased by, right. by a plane. And then um, in the James Bond version, it's like, yes, he he's getting chased by the plane, but he's got a gun. Right. He has to put it together piece by piece and then you know, get, get the it. shoot. You know? So they, they went one better, you know. There's the guy following him through the tunnel. Yep. What Which a great is, gag. Yeah, a great gag. Super ridiculous. <laughs> and then they do a similar thing in uh, Mission Impossible, you know? Oh, oh yeah. Well, Which is, uh, you know, the equally Walmart. ridiculous, but, like, I love both of these sequences. You know? Me too. Love it. In the, uh... The great joke of when they... Uh, again, it, it is like a Buster Keaton thing or something, like, when uh, they drop the bomb and it's like, oh, it doesn't get much closer than that. that. And then, whoop! <laughs> Fall right in the, into the crater. Yeah. And then he's like, suddenly I remembered my song. <laughs> that my homage with the rocks and the trees mm -hmm. and the birds in the sky. He's like... Doo, 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 doo. Yeah, at this point, because, like, there was, like, the Raiders of the Lost Ark Atari game, and then there was the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom arcade game, which I absolutely loved oh, like yeah. i lived for that game and then it's like by the time they're making this it's almost like they're thinking like okay how's this going to work in the video game you know because it, it does have a lot of like sort of puzzles and problem Definitely. solving it's like you're in the you know oh how are we going to defeat these planes oh uh pick up umbrella you know you know when i was little or maybe even like two weeks ago <laughs> uh i'm pretending it's a machine gun like in batman returns and i'm also doing the uh sean connery like uh scare the birds with the well, also, like, you know, I mean, Hitchcock is such a god to these guys, and so then it's like, oh, the birds. Like, well, you know, we'll have a little the birds kind of sequence where we're, we're going to weaponize birds. The plane's flying by and stuff, and it blows uh, Harrison Ford's fedora up, and all of a sudden he looks like, you know, one of the Bowery boys. <laughs> or something. like, meh, see? Yeah, it, is. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of funny, and then he, like, folds it back down. It's like, okay, he's, you know. He's a Bowery boy. But he looks like, you know, when, or like, uh, uh, Ed Norton in, oh, in the yeah. Honeymooners or something when you got the, the, the hat kind of pushed up. Hey, Ralphie hey, boy. boy! Donovan, he's, uh, you know, bribing his way in with some, uh, mm -hmm. he gives him, like, the Rolls Royce. Yeah. Yeah, it becomes an episode of comedians in cars getting <laughs> coffee. <laughs> and then this son of a bitch. Yeah. I love his death when he's in that, like, turret of the tank. Yeah, and... and so sad as well. And it is, like, it's like puppet or something of him. You know, like the CGI. Yeah. And then um, when Donovan's eight gets, like, the sped-up aging when he drinks the wrong grail. So and then good. becomes, like, a Clash of the Titans or something. You know, like Ray this, Harryhausen. Like, Ray Harryhausen effect. I love the, 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 the sound effects, too. He's like... Mm -hmm. rrr, rrr, rrr. Yeah. This was uh, on our mind when we were watching um, uh, Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. It is just kind of like a fun greatest hits, too, because it has, like, all the stuff you like from Raiders. Like, I mean, uh, you know, it feels like they were trying, like, a course correction from Temple, Temple. of Doom. Again, it's a shame because Temple of Doom is, like, such a great sequel, and it, and it, and it yeah. really is, like, an insane movie. Like, it's, it's pretty awesome. Bonkers. And so th this one's, like, a little safer, but it is, it is in such a comfort zone. Like, it really is fun. And, and I learned what a tapestry <laughs> was from this movie. Me, too. He's like... I learned what a Scottish, Scottish Duke is. Just Scottish Duke, Duke, then I'm Mickey Mouse. Yeah, then I am Mickey, Mickey Mouse. Mouse. That was some, uh, you know, dubbed in, you know, kind of, you, you, like, you know, that was, uh, what, a, 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 ADR or whatever. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's nice seeing Sala again. We love, you, know. you know what, Tom? We're, we're getting closer to the next indie movie. I think Sala's going to be back in that. I'm excited. Well, cause, like, when they did... Um, Temple of Doom, it was kind of like, okay, every one of these, it's going to be a completely new cast, he's going to have a new girlfriend, he's going to have uh, a new gang of friends, like people you've never, you know, and, and all this stuff's happening between adventures and stuff, and then it's like, with this, it's like, no, you know, people want to see, you know, get the whole, the gang back together, so, you know, yeah. Lucasfilm uh, is under the Disney umbrella, they're like, we've got to do a, a mini series for Jock from the first yeah. one. <laughs> right, like, yeah. It's like, the, it's like Pedro Pascal plays Jock. Yeah, because you do kind of, you know, <laughs> like, Jock. A anytime I watch Raiders of the Lost Ark, it is always like, oh yeah, that guy. That guy, you know, yeah. Jock. Jock. And, uh, yeah, and then um, the the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, he has that, like, British guy who's kind of like, like yeah, turns Mac. on a Mac. Yeah, 
they talk about their old, old, all the old times. Mm-hmm. They're like, uh, instead of Obi Wan, you and McGregor plays Mac, mm-hmm. <laughs> or Do- it's a Donovan spin-off yeah, yeah. movie. <laughs> right. How he falls prey to the uh, yeah young the, Donovan. Young Donovan. <laughs> that that scene where Harrison Ford's like, you know, hey, you know, you, you never talk to me, you never, and, he's, and then when Sean Connery's like, okay, I'm here, talk. What do you want to talk about? about? It's like. Man, that that's rough. Like, that's that, like you feel shit. it. Yeah, you feel it. What, what are you complaining about? Like yeah, a shitty father. Like yeah, that's that's like the narcissistic father. That's where it's like, you know, he's not like he's just not leaving any room for that kind of stuff. And then sort of like shaming you for wanting to have some kind of like heart to heart connection. And then it's like if he's got something that he's interested in. Then we can, because then he's like, okay, now that we got that unpleasantness out of the way, let's, let's talk, talk about, about the, the grail diary. You know, my talk about my personal obsession. Just when you've gotten interesting, <laughs> yeah. he's like, you, you left just as you were getting interesting. Got your motor run, and it's George Lazenby coming yeah. up. He's yeah, I mean like, George, La- hey George Lazenby's still around. He could he could play M, or he could be in <laughs> he could be in the new Indiana Jones. He could be friend, friend. or whatever, yeah, or a villain, or yeah, he's like. um like, sh- shouldn't it be all James Bond-related things? Yes, Timothy Dalton's still alive. Yeah, Timothy Dalton. It, yeah, It's his uh, uncle. Daniel Craig. Yeah, Timothy Dalton's gotten, like, interesting roles and stuff. Like, he was in uh, Hot Fuzz and stuff. Yes. Talking about George Lazenby before with James Bond, mm-hmm. we were mentioning Telly Savalas was as Blofeld. He, yeah, he was, was like, doing his... <laughs> yeah, the, the lollipop. <laughs> right. He's like, yeah, and it's like a gimmick <laughs> lollipop. It's like a poisonous, poisonous lollipop, lollipop that he gives somebody else to try. Or, like, yeah, it presses a button and lights up. Or it has a beacon or shoots stuff out. I played my share of uh, Indiana Jones video games. And there was... There was like an action game, there was an adventure game, there was a um, NES game. Remember in the NES game, because it's like all those challenges that Indiana Jones has to face to get the grail, they're, they're pretty cool in the movie, but then it's like, how do you translate that into a game? Because the one where he has to spell Jehovah, in that sequence, it's like, you have to spell Jehovah and then just keep spelling it over and over, you know, to get, you know, to get, you just have to keep spelling it and spelling it and spelling it and spelling it. He's like, uh, he fails it because he spells Judas Priest. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Yeah. you want to pass the test, the pen and the man, if you had to listen to your damn new wave of British heavy metal. <laughs> the Western was like so out of fashion by this point, you know, like, like when we were kids, the, the Western was done. Like there were, there were no, you know, and, and then you'd have these kind of like attempts to sort of reinvent it or whatever, but it wasn't just like, but like Indiana Jones is like a way to like make a Western and not have like, like a stigma. Door. Exactly. It's like, he's got a hat. It's not a cowboy <laughs> hat, but he's got a hat. He's on a horse. I see that he's horse. wearing leather. You know, he's got his, his uh, six shooter. He's in the desert. Yeah. He's, he's uh, fighting the bad guys. But but, but yeah. it's not a western. But it's don't not a western. worry. Don't yeah, worry. Don't worry. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeehaw! <You know. laughs> we gotta have him rub. He's like, uh, and he hasn't gone he, to. Well, and he, he doesn't have a lasso, but he's got, he's got the a whip. whip. Yeah. Dude, I was cracking up. I love when your your wild bill dialogue. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, Yeehaw! one way to rope a dog. Rope a dog. It's like how, how much, much of this stuff can I put in a it's you know amazing. like it's so much fun. If you could chart what um like the Indiana Jones movies did for like the sale of whips. Like did whip Dude, sales go through the roof? There was like at like the Halloween store, they'd have like these junky whips. Mm-hmm. And I would we would try to like we would get, get like the sonic boom. sonic yeah. boom from it. And uh There'd be like uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna master this. Mm-hmm. It's same with like a boomerang. Right. A whip and a boomerang are two things that I would like. Well, uh, <laughs> the road roll, the road warrior sold a lot of boomerangs. Remember, there was that boomerang that would like cut your fingers off. Yes. And stuff? Uh, you know, and then this. None of them ever worked for me. I was trying to fucking throw a boomerang. I like I knew a guy who had like a um, like the Indiana Jones machete from Temple of Doom, like hanging oh, on his wall and yeah. stuff. So like. There was, you know, there was, you know, there was a market for, for this that kind stuff. of stuff. Well, I want, okay, a goal is to try to successfully throw a boomerang. 
by the crocodile the, 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 I wonder if he throws a boomerang in there I don't think he does no but he's got his bu buoy knife mm -hmm. that's not a knife yeah he's uh, yeah that movie sold a lot of knives this sold a lot of whips, whips. and fedoras like when I was a kid, I wanted a fedora so bad, and it, and I like my mom got me a fedora, and it was like you know from like uh, Salvation Army or something. You know, it's like in a little hat box. It smells like some old guy's cigars and mothballs. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's like it, it was it was, and I lo like it was amazing. It was like whoa, you know, it was like like a true fedora That's that awesome. had been like you know like it was. The, I had the Indiana Jones hat Jesus. because. Every old guy, you know, in the had 80s, a, every old man had one and was, like, done with done it. Done with didn't, it. Didn't want it anymore. I love the or, sense or you were, you, were, you, yeah. you meant. Or we got to get a snap cap. <laughs> <laughs> what a great gag, mm -hmm. too. Uh, he, like, looks the... He's like, wow, that's a powerful... Mm -hmm. and I think this is the guy that gets his, like, uh, the treads on his back. Yeah, on, this whole tank sequence, because, it again, it is, like, deja vu with... Raiders of the Lost Ark because in, in there it was like he's on the horse but he's chasing trucks this time it's tanks, tanks. you know Harrison Ford does a great like I'm being choked face mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. care to wet your whistle Marcus <laughs> I'd rather spit in your face yeah and then you got the periscope I like how this guy gets really excited. Yeah. He's like, the Americana. <laughs> He's like, is fair spruits. I was like, that guy got like, he was really like, he just like, yeah, a little very, extra, a little something. Yeah, he's he's, he's into really it. Yeah. into that. Like I was like, he's tickled. He's he's he's, he's tickled. <laughs> I, these guys are fucking doing great. Like, uh, like stressing. Yeah, selling it, selling yeah. everything. Yeah, acting what? is so important. The penny is mightier than the sword. Yeah, and it's like. That's how James Bo James Bond, you know, has gotten out of stuff with some kind of gimmicked pen, you know, the shooting a missile or whatever. Like, uh, you know, so it's kind of cool. Like Sean Connery gets to gets to do a little bit of that. When Marcus is telling him the pen is mightier than the sword, it's kind of like I'm, he's telling him his James Bond line because like James Bond would have said, I, I guarantee there's a James Bond movie where he does something with the pen. And he's like the pen is mightier than the sword, you know. But yeah, Henry Jones Jr. is not James Bond, so he needs someone Marcus to say to it on his yeah, behalf say it for him. Yeah, one of the favorite parts of the whole action sequence: Ford hanging on that on that blown out yeah. uh, little. Um... Now I know that like it's James Bond who invented all those like you know saying like a little one liner after the the you know after after he kills somebody or does something, but like when you were a kid. Who did you think invented that stuff? Like Arnold. It, me too. That's what I thought. Exactly. Like that's what. That's what. That's what I was. I was going for. I thought because, it was Arnold. Yes. Exactly. That was something. Oh, that's an Arnold Schwarzenegger. Thing. So it's so funny when you realize, like, oh no, this is like guys who grew up with James Bond doing a James Bond thing. But I, I was like, oh, Arnold it's, invented that. He invented, you, you know, uh, consider the divorce and you know stuff like that. No chance. Yeah. <laughs> Big mistake. Yeah. Jack Slater. Hasta la vista, baby. Yeah, all that's bye, like, Mary. yeah, bye bye, baby. baby. <laughs> Au revoir, <laughs> les enfants. Sont <laughs> <laughs> <Sort> les bleus. Yeah. Zut à l'heure. Zut à l'heure. Zut à l'heure. Zut à l'heure. But yeah, I, for the longest time, <laughs> I thought it was that. That's a, a that's an Arnold Schwarzenegger thing, and and then it's like, oh no, that's a James Bond thing. He's you know, like, so then, so then, when C three PO is doing it in Attack of the Clones, remember, like he's like, I've lost my head. And, you know that. Kind oh of, yeah, <laughs> he becomes James Bond for a little bit. This is we're really doing India uh, in the Last Crusade justice. Yeah, I'm glad we, we I'm glad we got to talk about Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Crusade. You know, if you put together the bits and pieces from various episodes, you get like a complete uh, Last Crusade episode. You take a little bit from this, a little bit from the the uh, Lawrence of Arabia. Someone time stamps them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that that, that, um, that uh, guy looking through the periscope was getting uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 his jollies. He was, he was getting his rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then yeah, oh, that that whole tank. Every single one of them goes off the cliff yeah. in this tank. You know, so I he hope you, I hope you had your fun because now it's time to die. <laughs> I was think that got really really. really. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm using a periscope. I'm like, I'm like, ah! <laughs> like, look at the periscope. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Periscope porn is this uh, is what that guy said too. It's Periscope he's, fetish. That guy, his backstory is he angled to get that assignment. Oh, he, like he swiddled his way to get. It. He's like, <laughs> they're like, we put the wrong guy <laughs> on the Periscope. <laughs> So yeah, I'm Tom Scholey, author of I Am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee. <laughs> I'm Matt Zioli. And Saturday, May 6th is free comic book day, and there's going to be a free comic book day edition of I Am Stan. It's a, a comic book-sized excerpt of the book, and um, ask your retailer to set aside a copy for you. Follow me on Instagram at cinema underscore two. And I'm going to be making an appearance on free comic book day at Phantom of the Attic Comics Oakland in Pittsburgh from 1.30 to 4, so I hope I'll see you there. Follow the show on Instagram at total underscore recall underscore show. And follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey, on Instagram at Tom underscore Scholey, and uh, check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Tom Scholey. The, uh, I'm like, I pull this periscope down, uh, and the guy is like, uh, ah, uh, he's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, they're like, the, all the other guys operating the tank, they're like, oh, great. <laughs> Thank you.